detest Hillary. I'll tell you something else. Latinos don't like Hillary. They don't like her because they don't like a... Um, i got to be very delicate about it. Oh, well, it's the opposite of what I just said about what their culture is and what they respect. Let's put it to you that way. They're not a matriarchy. They don't like women to begin with telling them what to do. They're not going to vote for a woman. That's number. There's something you got to understand about that. It's whether you want to hear it or not doesn't matter to me. I'm giving you one man's opinion. I'm giving you an analysis that is based upon very careful study. So there are two groups that you would think would be natural allies of the Democrat socialist machine, but they're not. And they're, they're moving, according to polls I've seen, over to the Trump side. And this is much to the consternation of the, of the wonderful people, the truth tellers in the media, all the people that you've trusted for all these years to tell you exactly what's going on. All of the independent men with such grave uh, uh, bravery, the Jake Tappers, the Wolf Blitzers, that type, you know, the type you've come to trust to tell you the truth. You see, it's giving them a lot of trouble because they know that they're supposed to get Hillary elected at all costs, and they're failing. Oh, they're failing at the end of the day. Their, their jobs are on the line. If they can't deliver the goods, what good are they? I mean, if you want to work for the Politburo uh, and you want to be a member of Pravda after their, the Politburo candidate is selected and you haven't gotten that Politburo candidate elected, you're going to be cast into Siberia. The next thing you know, you might be teaching journalism at a school in Arkansas, an unaccredited school in Arkansas, owned by the Clinton family or the Clinton Foundation. You might be teaching journalism at the Clinton Foundation to three television screens. You never know what might happen if you can't get her elected. So here I stand the day before Christmas Eve. I will be off tomorrow, just so you know, but we have no one filling in. There'll be me filling in for me with... Some of the best pieces from the uh, last few weeks. Same on Friday because no one's going to, I don't know, no one's here on Friday, I guess. Everyone's somewhere else. I'll be traveling Friday and then Monday, well, I'll tell you when I get back. Yeah, we have an administration that is either blind to this evil or is co collaborating with this evil. But it does not matter which of the above statements is factually correct. All we as a people know is that no one is protecting us from this evil. We know that. We know that by how? We know it by San Bernardino. We know it by the fact that those subhumans who conducted that massacre were admitted into this country because DHS failed us. And Obama, instead of firing the head of the Department of Homeland Security, let that, that, that loser go out on the, on the, uh, on the warpath against anyone who criticized them. He mumbled his way through the media over the next three days, and then they, they put him back where he belongs, in a back room somewhere. He is put there to do nothing. We have the bravest men in the, in the world, the bravest and, and most superior fighting force in the world, being led by sissies. We have police being led by sissies in America who know what to do to control the cities. We have an FBI that could break doors in and yank them out by their filthy noses bravest men and women you could imagine being controlled by sissies the country has been sissified to use an overly used and under, underly used word but that's not the real reason that these brave men are being controlled it's not the sissification factor it is in my opinion an infiltration factor when you see a slaughter like we saw a massacre in san bernardino and the next day muslim hate groups posing as uh, protectors of the Muslim people, go out there and start attacking America, saying ba you're basically responsible for what happened owing to your policies. Uh, don't uh, We've got to report Islamophobia. They know the game very well. They learned it from the ACLU. They learned it from Al Sharpton, in my opinion. They learned it from Jesse Jackson. They learned how to bully everyone into submission. And so the FBI is afraid of them. CIA is afraid of them, military is afraid of them, police are afraid of them. Where does this end unless we stand up to these bullies? Does it end like the Yazidi girls? Oh, that can't happen here. Why, are you kidding? That can't happen here. Don't be crazy, savage. That's lunacy. That's paranoia. That's right-wing paranoia. It can't happen here. Really, and San Bernardino couldn't happen here either. And the Boston Marathon bombing by two Muslims couldn't happen here either, right? And 9-11 couldn't happen here, right? 
and all the other hundreds and hundreds of Muslim attacks that were thwarted by our government, so they say, couldn't have happened here either, right? But they are happening here. Why? For the exact reasons I just said to you. Because the brave men and women who are in these agencies, they could stop the next one to a, probably a 99th percentile of, uh, of, let us say, up to the 99th percentile. All they got to do is preemptively arrest the vermin who they're tracking before they kill us. They can't. Why can't they? Ah, oh, civil rights. Ah, oh, yes. The sacred cow of civil rights. I forgot about that. Well, let me remind you of something about civil rights. Civil rights laws were written for a civil society. Without a civil society, you could not have civil rights laws. They were written for another time. They're not written for a time of Muslim violence and Islamic terrorism. Without a civil society, you can have no rights at all because you'll be dead. What good are civil rights laws if you're not alive? So what are you saying, Savage? Suspend uh, civil rights laws? No, I'm not Abraham Lincoln. I'm not a, a hero of Obama who suspended habeas corpus. Not at all. I'm not a, a, a saying what Lincoln would do. Lincoln, uh, you know, the great hero of Obama, suspended habeas corpus. He arrested journalists. You didn't know that, did you? He arrested journalists. Check it out. It's actually in my book, Government Zero, based on facts, not on rhetoric. Lincoln was a dictator, a fascist dictator during the Civil War. Why am I telling you all of this? You figure it out. You figure it out. If he's one of Obama's heroes, you can pretty f much figure out why I'm uh, quoting you what, uh, what Lincoln actually was. But Lincoln isn't the problem right now. Right now the problem is, the f is, is Fang, Fang the surfer. I actually sleep better knowing he's away on vacation. I feel, I feel a little safer knowing the lunatic is away for a week or so. I don't fear I'm going to wake up tomorrow to another kick in the groin. There's no one to protect any of us. There's nothing between us and this madman's mania. Whatever the madman wants to do, he gets away with, the lunatic. What, he's going to be stopped by Paul Ryan, the quizzling of our time, who's running a, a puppet Democrat government inside the Republican Party? Write that one down. That goes beyond what you've heard so far. Just as Mr. Quisling welcomed the Nazis when they invaded Norway, I believe. I think it was Norway. I'll have to check. And Robert, check if it was Norway or Finland. I believe it was Norway. So the Nazis invade Norway. Quisling, who was Norwegian, welcomes the Nazis. And they make Quisling the president of a, a Nazi puppet government inside Norway after the invasion. That's Ryan. Ryan is the Quisling of our time. Paul Ryan, Mr. Beard, who I called Obama's beard, which was close to uh, what I wanted to say. He's not so much Obama's beard. He is the head of a Democrat puppet government inside the Republican Party, which I like that much. I like that analysis better. It fits better. A puppet Democrat government inside the Republican Party. Puppet, like the word puppet and quizzling. Was it Norway, Robert? Yes, it was Norway. My memory did not fail me yet. I have a very good memory. It's very funny. The older I get, the better my memory gets, both short and long term. <clears throat> the thing I can't remember is trivia. It's funny. I can, remember, I can remember important things. I can't remember trivia that doesn't matter. I was always like that as a student. That's why I wasn't a great student, because I wasn't good at rote memory. I couldn't do it, because I, oh, it didn't matter to me. I didn't want to remember. What I, I found that what I needed, what I was interested in, I could remember. What I felt was important, I could remember forever. And then I had a great college teacher, the best teacher I ever had, I forget his name, when he said, look, the tests don't really matter to me because I'm not really here to trick you. He said, all I want you to do is learn how to find the answers to what you're looking for, where to go to get the answers. That's what I call, that's what I call a, a, a scholar who, who was not there to punish the students. He said, I just want you to learn where to find the answers to what you're looking for. I forget which course in advanced science it was. I don't remember even which science it was in. That was, he taught me how to find what I was looking for. Now, today, no one bothers going to the library, really, except scholars who may want to find obtuse texts. But today, they go to Google, that they think is scholarship. But your Google searches, as good as they are, are quite limited, by the way. There should be a primary search as Google. It's very good, but it's not the end. You know, it's not the end. They're very, very biased. They leave things out that don't agree with their biased philosophy. And by the way, in the in the in the, in the list of companies getting away with not paying their fair share of taxes, I, I forgot to li list Google yesterday. We spent a lot of time talking about Apple and their trickery, Microsoft and their tax trickery. 
We know all about it, but Google is one of the worst offenders in the, in the analysis, by the way, that anyone could do. If Google actually paid their fair share of taxes, along with Facebook and Microsoft, the budget would be balanced probably overnight. But they don't. They claim their income is overseas and they don't pay federal taxes on it. They pay a pittance or nothing in Ireland or wherever they're headquartered, the Isle of, I don't know where they are. Take a look at it. You, you say, that's fair. So why are they not paying their taxes? Why? How did they get away with it? I explained to you. I told you all about how Hitler did it. I went back to the crooks and the industrialists that he cultivated during his rise to power. The same way this Democrat machine is working. They cultivate all these huge corporations by letting them get away with tax murder. And so they don't oppose them. And that way they have absolute power. That's how it works. So I could talk about the campaign, you know, if you want to do that. I don't know that I want to get stuck on that, but uh, we can. Oh, I didn't finish what I started on something, which was the dog thing, right? I got to find it. Here it is. I started by saying, did you know that Muslims hate dogs? Of course, there might be probably modern Muslims who don't, but by and large, dogs are hated in Islam. And I told you that in one of the events, uh, this one was in New Orleans, when they threw a seeing eye dog out of a car and harmed the, the wrist of the blind woman. And the Council on American Islamic Relations, CAIR, replied by pointing out that, quote, the saliva of dogs invalidates the ritual purity needed for prayer. And he left it to the scholars of Islam to decide whether a guide dog should be allowed in a cab. All of this was published by Daniel Pipes, September 25th, 2014, Muslims versus seeing eye dogs. February 99, <clears throat> Annie McEachern, blind since birth, tried to get into Hassan Tahir's cab in Cincinnati, but he refused her dog entry. When McEachern complained to the city, Tahir noted that Islam holds dogs to be impure. And again, care came to his defense, noting, quote, people from the Middle East especially, we have been indoctrinated with a kind of fear of dogs. The driver has a genuine fear, and he acted in good faith. He's acted in accordance with his religious beliefs, quote, close quote. October 2000. Another taxi issue arose in Edmonton, Canada, when Khalid Habib Ahmad refused to allow Kelly Fair to take his guide dog into his cab, then claimed without the necessary proof from an allergist to back him up an allergy to dog hair. Ahmad also added that as a Muslim talking, taking a dog in his car conflicted with his religion. The case against Ahmad was dismissed because of improperly filings. July 01, Claude Everett, a blind resident of Oakland, December 06, Hani Bidi Musan, born blind and living in Oslo, uh, is kicked out of a taxi in Norway by a Muslim. No one will actually take her. <clears throat> May 14, 2010, at Napoli's Italian restaurant in Alta Vista, Virginia, Christine Calabrese, 47 and legally blind, goes to the restaurant on May 8 with her husband, John, and her service dog, Koji. They took our order for drinks, so I thought everything was fine said Christine Calabrisi, but they were soon asked to leave by the managers Ahmed Ahmed and Fethi Mus. I know my business. That dog is not allowed, said Ahmed. 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 So why am I pointing out the hatred of dogs by so many Muslims? Because, again, you stupid Americans don't even know what you're facing. You are so blind to your own biases that you don't even want to see the truth. They treat women like dirt. They treat dogs worse than dogs. And you say, well, what's wrong with that? They'll all integrate into America. And besides, I hate white men so much, it's okay. All right, you get the picture. This is how bad the scene is. Somalia cancels Christmas because it threatens Islamic culture. You know that Christmas celebrations are being canceled all across America because it threatens atheist culture? It's, in, other, in other words, it threatens liberal culture. The culture of liberalism is that of nihilism. The culture of liberalism is canceling Christian holidays across America. And that preceded the Muslim invasion. Now you understand why in Government Zero I told you about the danger we're facing from the progressive slash Islamist alliance. I'm not going to read from the book. I'm not going to go back to it. You, Many of you are reading it and know what's going on. And my only hope is that when Donald Trump becomes president, the buses start rolling, first south, and then the airplanes start running in the directions they come in. All of the UPS airplanes that are bringing Muslims in 
are then hired by the Trump government to take them back out and take them back to their homeland, which they love so much. Take them back to Syria.